Rob, and you're the creator of Earth World. Awesome. So, was there a particular struggle you faced when developing the world, and what did you choose to do about it? Sure. Well, uh, with Earth World, we knew uh, because we were starting on the uh, Giant in the Playground site, we were we had a specific kind of audience there that we had to impress, and that was all tabletop gamers. <laughs> Many of them are rules lawyers. So, uh, <laughs> no, really. <laughs> yes. Well, I was I was telling David that I uh, um, had done a guest comic at Order of the Stick at one point, and three people jumped on me for minor violations of Dungeons oh, and Dragons rules or how dare Order you. of the Stick's canon. And uh, <laughs> so I kind of knew what I was up against, and I realized that we were going to have to hold the rules of our game-like world uh, to uh, exact canon consistency, or they would just throw up their hands and just say, I'm not reading that, he's cheating. Oh, no. So, you know, because, well, it's valid. I mean, here we are at Gen Con, we have an audience of gamers, and that's fine. And I, so if those are the, the challenges that they put out for me, then I had to meet that. But the problem is that as, as you go along and you write something like 400,000 words into this tale, it's hard to keep everything that you've ever said in your head at the same time to write the next thing. And it's very hard to keep from tripping over something you may have set as canon six years ago. So, uh, the way that we've met that challenge is fortunately by leaning heavily on our fans. We have a wiki that I've written all of 10 articles for. We have over over nine thousand articles <laughs> in our in our wiki, and so I refer to the wiki all the time about rules of magic, about history, about characters. And uh, when that fails me, I can do an archive dive, or I can uh, sometimes go to our uh, chat channel on IRC, and there are people there waiting to do missions for me. Could you go <laughs> research this? Tell me how many. Uh, the most number of purple dragons we've ever seen suit Lady Sylvia with in the court in the uh, courtyard, because I need a minimum number of dragons that there could be in this scene, because I'm going to write something going forward. And somebody will often be there who will say, "Yes, I will go and spend another 10 minutes or 15 minutes or something like that, doing a dive through here and just meticulously comparing panel to panel." And they'll come back with it. Yeah, I think this is the one where we saw six of them, and it was the most I think we ever saw. So I think you're good there, and I would get my answer six, and it would help me check against the reality that we presented in the story. To That's amazing out. that your fans are that supportive. They're, if you if you go wonderful. into the IRC Absolutely. chat, yeah. yeah, they're wonderful. Wonderful. So, uh, yeah, use your fans wisely. <laughs> <laughs> it's my advice to anyone who's going to so very write interactive and epic on the. Oh well, I think participation is a big part of having a web comic. When you have your forums, when you have people coming here to meet and talk, and we had a fan gathering last night, it was fantastic. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, I think participation is a big uh, advantage that web comics have over you know traditional print comics or other media. It's just so more it's just more immediate in terms of the creator interacting with the fan. And yes, there are downsides to that, but mostly that's a huge, huge positive for doing uh, doing web comics as a media. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, sir. Sure. Become a tool and get your Earthworld fix at earthworld.com. Another hilarious thing that Rob mentioned after our interview concluded was the fact that at their fan gathering, who should show up but Steve Jackson? Yes, that Steve Jackson. He even got to ride in this chicken limo that they rented for the party. Check back later this week for more worksite interviews from Gen Con 2013.